My favorite class as a chemical engineer was reactor design. And at a high level, what I loved about the class is that you are essentially designing the heart of a giant. And what I mean by that is when you look at an oil refinery or a beer brewing plant or anything, you have chemical reactors at the heart of these processes and these actual reactors are generally not that large in size, maybe a cubic meter total in volume. But what you do end up with is that reactor design that you decide to go with dictates so much of what happens before that reactor and afterwards. You've got an upstream component such as preheating your feed, getting the concentration right before it goes into the reactor, um, all these other tuning knobs at your disposal. And then after your reactor, you've got to worry about extracting your product, uh, capturing your unused reactant, getting that back into your feed to your reactor. And so it all revolves around the heart of your chemical process, and that is your chemical reactor. And so the very first thing to address in a reactor design class is agreeing on a definition of what a chemical reactor is. And at the end of the day, it is essentially just a control volume in which we are changing, we're transforming chemical species from one into another. And um, this can be a combustion reaction, this can be any sort of chemical reaction you can possibly think of. And so this is a very broad definition. And chemical reactions uh, are endothermic, they're exothermic. Some of them you want to have more moles in your gas phase and your other phases. And so there's enormous um, parameters that you need to take into account when you're figuring out what kind of chemical reactor are you going to go with. And so if I were to sketch a very generic uh, control volume, in which we had some flow coming in and some flow coming out. And I'll have a component A that I want to convert into component B. And uh, we'll know that no process is perfect and we're always going to have you know, some byproducts, so unreacted A. Essentially what your job is in reactor design is to take this control volume and figure out what is the best control volume to use in order to maximize your conversion of B so that you don't need to do as much uh, extraction or expensive distillation uh, downstream of your reactor. And so uh, another key thing to make note of is how depending on what kind of reactor type you decide to go with, you will have differing levels of the concentration of A. So if I was to define this as point X1 and this is another point X2, um, one of the main considerations you're going to be making is um, how do you want your concentration of A to evolve as it's within your reactor? And this will come down to kinetics. And kinetics describes the rate of reaction. And generally, our goal is to make as much product as we can. We want to have the fastest kinetics we can. It does depend, however, on the thermodynamic properties of the actual chemical reactions that are occurring. Because if we're dealing with an exothermic reaction and we're keeping our reactor very high, hot, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot having slower kinetics because heat is so high. And so um, having a good intuition at the same time is very important throughout this entire process. And um, as a chemical engineer, walking into a class, especially if you know nothing about reactor design, your job is to fall back on what you know. And what you should know is the mole balance. And um, so the mole balance equation that we're going to see time and again in all of our uh, classes tells us that we've got some flow of some material called J uh, and J naught refers to the fact that this is coming in. We're going to have this flow of this material exiting our reactor. 
we're going to have a rate of generation of our species J, and this will be equivalent to the rate of change in the number of moles of J per time. And so uh, in minus out plus generation and consumption is equal to your rate of accumulation, and this is referring to a control volume that you have sometimes arbitrarily defined within reason. And so with the high level stuff kind of out of the way, uh, what we're going to be looking at and uh, kind of just scraping the tip of the iceberg in in this video is the main things that you're going to keep in mind uh, in a reactor design course. And uh, the very first thing to address is whether or not you're dealing with a flow process or a batch process. And so uh, what a flow process is, is basically it's an open system and it means that you've got an inlet and an outlet and the reactor that you're going to see drawn several times is called a continuous stirred tank reactor. Continuous refers to this inlet and outlet term and Stirred refers to the fact that your solution within your CSTR is going to be well mixed. The concentration of whatever chemical species you're going to be considering is going to be assumed homogeneous and uniform throughout all points within your CSTR. And um, the other important thing here is whatever concentration a component has, if we're looking at component A for instance, the outlet of your CSTR will have the same exact concentration because it is well mixed. Okay, and so that's one of the key reactors you're going to be looking at with flow systems. Uh, for batch processes, we make use of things called BSTRs. And BSTRs, you're generally going to have only an inlet or an outlet term. And if you've ever brewed beer before or cooked pasta, it's a lot like that process where you put in your ingredients, you set a temperature, a pressure, a pH, and you walk away and you let your process happen. Because it is a BSTR, batch stirred tank reactor, it is stirred so it is homogeneous and during this process you'll have some reaction occurring such as A is being transformed into chemical species B. And um, so these are the types of processes that we should expect to see. Uh, oftentimes what dictates whether or not you're going to opt for a flow reactor versus a batch reactor will also have to do with the volume of product that you're expecting to create. And so in cases when you want to have massive volumes of products, such as if you were operating a waste treatment plant, um, they are going to be operating essentially CSTRs because the number of cubic meters of solution that they need to process every minute requires you have these massive reactors in place where you can actually uh, grow essentially cell cultures to consume all the nutrients so that you don't get algal, algal blooms when you pipe out the water to the bay. And so scale is going to be one of the main things that dictates your choice in this and then you will see batch processes a lot when you're in the pharmaceutical industry because oftentimes uh, these bioreactors biggest year we're going to be look, really looking at is probably 500 liters and um, you know the the quantities of product that are made uh, is a lot lower especially when you're working in GMP environments and you need to keep very precise control of each one of your batches that's when you're going to start turning to uh, BSTR reactors. Um, another very important uh, consideration to make is the sizing of your reactor. And uh, people who care about the business aspect of this, uh, this is where things can become very interesting in terms of you know your anticipated uh, growth and how big of a market you expect and how much of the market you expect to have. Uh, you're going to be sizing your reactors based on uh, what the business analysts tell you and um, 
you do generally want to have your reactors configured so that you are operating at 100% capacity during a process. Um, and so sizing of the reactor, it's just really a fancy way of saying what volume to go with. Go with. And uh, the governing equations behind all this are going to be, I'm going to be going over them in future videos. And then finally, uh, the last important parameters that we're going to be taking into account and diving deeper into in later videos are going to be discovering the optimal so i'm working on the handwriting uh temperature pressure concentration of species i for all i so for all of your species um, you're also going to care about your residence time and this will depend on the reaction kinetics and uh, you know, a lot of other variables and also feed conversion. Okay. And so, um, I do hope that this kind of gives you guys a nice taste of what reactor design is. It is very cool stuff. In my opinion, I love learning about it and I'm excited to, uh, teach, uh, what I've learned uh, from my time in college about it. I do hope you guys find this useful and thanks for watching.